on uh, the tall spindle uh, training system. So a tall spindle training system, of course, is a is a, a training system which uses uh, uh, close spacing um, and uh, minimal printing to uh, achieve a, a tall, narrow canopy. And um, this printing by the numbers, what is the numbers? The numbers simply refers to the fact that um, when you're pruning a tree, you, you need to know uh, uh, what limbs do you cut. And very importantly, when have I cut enough limbs off? <laughs> when do I stop? Um, and then uh, the question that we asked as researchers is what data is needed and how much of it is needed. And our goal in this particular project was to ultimately to develop robotic pruning and to develop a set of rules for the engineers. Historically, we've, uh, as horticulturists, given the engineers uh, some pretty tall orders, uh, and they've oftentimes uh, been unable to fulfill our, our desires as far as uh, mechanization and automation in, in tree fruits. But as we move into uh, these higher density systems with simpler tree canopies, I believe we've finally given them uh, some targets where we can give them data about uh, how to prune. So another way of saying this and putting this into perspective for a, a horticultural audience that's uh, going to prune with loppers, not an automated pruner, is that uh, there's a science to pruning. We oftentimes talk about the art and the science of pruning. And of course, if you go back to some of the great uh, forerunners in, in horticulture, Liberty Hyde Bailey and others, they, they talked about the art of pruning. And uh, I'm here to tell you with, with tall spindle trees, there is no art. It is all science. And I hope in the next few minutes to, to help convince you of that. The, the beautiful thing about that is, is that if we understand pruning better, we can uh, achieve the desired outcomes more accurately and more precisely. So um, we need to be able to have these numbers to, to know uh, what to do, how to do it, uh, to evaluate how we did. And uh, we need these things for both mechanization and for automation. In this talk, I am going to talk about tall spindle apple trees. Um, these are um, becoming the world standard for uh, horticultural uh, training systems in um, in apple orchards. This is uh, an orchard in Bolzano, Italy, and if you travel to uh, northern Italy and travel around, you can see 40,000 contiguous acres of this system. This is not pie in the sky, maybe someday we'll have the tools to do this. This is now, this is today, this is what your competition's going to do. And they're doing that because it gives some very high very high marketable yields, very high yields, very high quality uh, fruit, and it does it in a very efficient way. So uh, it's a very important system. Uh, I think it's a very simple system. It builds on what we know, uh, having grown up in this industry and started with central leaders and moved into vertical axe and slender spindles, and now we're into tall spindles, and this is not a, a difficult place for, uh, for you to go. Uh, it, it features uh, uh, very common features, a minimal branching structure uh, and a very simple target, which again uh, makes it very possible to do. We conducted studies uh, over the last several years uh, at Penn State to establish and confirm some pruning rules. And the focus of this morning's talk is going to be on the whole concept of pruning severity. And to do this, uh, we also looked at, at pruning rule orders. Uh, as Wynn mentioned, they're, they're, depending on which one of you is teaching us on a given day, there's either seven rules you follow for pruning, tall spindles, or four. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter particularly uh, as long as you understand it's fairly simple. But the first rule is, is uh, the, the idea that you're going to make renewal cuts, leave a short stub, and that you are going to remove branches at their point of origin and that uh, this is where the pruning severity will come in. This gives us a very definable targets for our engineers, and it also helps us with our manual pruning. To do this uh, pruning severity, we took a particular project uh, or a tip typical concept here. What we did is we measured the diameter of each limb on the tree. And 
I understand that you're not going to do that. However, um, our friends at Valent have a, an Aquili fruit tool, uh, and uh, you, can, uh, you can look at it. It's a very valuable tool for measuring fruit diameter and determining the right number of fruits. Um, to be leaving on a particular branch on a training system like this. And it, this uh, concept kind of grew out of that whole approach. So you're gonna, what we did is we measured the, fruit, the diameter of each limb on the tree, and we measured the trunk uh, at about a foot up from the graft union. And then we calculated, we, we added up all of the limb cross-sectional areas, and we divided that uh, by the trunk cross-sectional area, and we chose a, a ratio of limb to trunk that would give us uh, a desired outcome. To reach that level of printing severity, we removed the largest successive limb, uh, so that we, the first limb we cut off was the biggest limb on the tree, the second limb we cut off was the second biggest, and so on, until we reached the desired ratios. And this is a math-heavy uh, one, and don't worry, there will not be a quiz after the, after the talk, but just to show you that what we did is, uh, we also used a, a maximum diameter approach, and this is sort of more where this would actually have application in your orchard. So we would do the same thing that we just talked about in the previous slide. We'd measure the limbs, and we'd measure the trunk, maybe on four representative trees for a given block of trees. We'd establish a, a, a target uh, ratio of limb uh, diameter to trunk diameter, uh, we can do a simple uh, mating or a mating disruption. We can do a simply uh, maximum limb diameter uh, calculation by just simply uh, using regression. And then all we have to do then is go up to a tree, look at its trunk, decide what's the maximum allowable branch diameter for that given tree, and cut off all the bigger limbs than that size. I will add to you that. Um, over the last couple of years, that target size, that MD, has been about half inch, about a half inch limb. So anything much bigger than a half inch limb is going to get pruned off. So this is a talk about the science of how we got there, and I, um, that was the take home message. <laughs> so this is just to kind of help illustrate this whole uh, maximum allowable branch diameter concept for pruning severity. And uh, if you have a trunk, that has a diameter about this big, then if for a limb to trunk cross section or a limb to, tr to a trunk ratio of 1.25, which is about the middle of the road, then that would be your maximum allowable branch diameter. If it was a small tree uh, with a smaller trunk, then your then the measurement between uh, it would be a smaller uh, you'd be uh, your maximum allowable branch diameter would get smaller as well. So just to show you um, how this uh, actually uh, comes into practice, here's a Fuji tree unpruned. Here's a same tree pruned to a 1.25 LT ratio. And so uh, we, we tried everything from uh, 1.75 right down to 0 0.5 for ratios between the limbs and the trunk. and, and uh, Right here in the middle of the road, uh, 1.2, 1.25 seem to be uh, about the best place. Well, well, how can I say that? What, what do I mean that, that that seemed to be a good area to be? So this is uh, just some data to show you. This is the number of limbs removed when we achieved these different levels of pruning severity. And so this is uh, the, more, the smaller the LT ratio, the more severe the pruning, the larger, the less severe the pruning. Our largest uh, ratio was 1.75, and you can see with a 1.75 LT ratio, we were only removing eight or nine limbs per tree. With a 1.25, we were removing about uh, 12 limbs. And when we pruned to uh, a very severe 0.5 LT ratio, we were, we were cutting off about 20 limbs on these trees in this particular year. <clears throat> and the same thing was true pretty much in... in uh, 2014, same trees, 1.25 ratio. In order to achieve that, we were removing the 10 largest limbs in those trees. When we looked at the remaining uh, branch diameter uh, of those trees, and again, if we just use 1.25 and say that was kind of our centering uh, value, the largest uh, limbs on that 
a tree had a, a diameter of about 12 millimeters, which is half an inch. How about that? Just for contrast, when we pruned very severely, the largest diameter was about 8 millimeters, which is quite a bit less. Much smaller limbs on those trees left. Maximum remaining branch diameter in 2014 followed a similar type of a pattern. Um, and again, for 1.25, they were, they were about half inch. <clears throat> we left uh, a, a stub to encourage renewal. Um, and that's a, a tenant of this tall spindle uh, type training system. We'll get into uh, stubs uh, a little bit uh, in my second talk, but I wanted to uh, point out that uh, there was a relationship there between how hard we pruned and uh, the number of renewal shoots that we got on a tree. And again, uh, 1.25 being the middle of the road, uh, we, were, we were getting about one uh, renewal shoot for every limb we pruned off with a renewal cut. The same thing was true in 2014, where we had about uh, 15 renewal shoots per tree. And so the, uh, the level of severity affects the amount of renewal that you get. The yield per tree here. And this is uh, kilograms of yield per tree on this axis. And this is pruning severity on this axis. And somewhere around 1.25, we were getting about uh, 70 uh, kilograms per tree. When we pruned much less severely, we were getting over 80 kilograms per tree. When we pruned less severely, or very severely, I'm sorry, we could reduce that to about 40 kilograms per tree. This was in, uh, this is the three-year average over the last three years of the study. So um, plant growth regulators, of course, we always think of as our first line of crop load management. But how severely you're pruning has a profound effect. If you're pruning very lightly, you might have twice as much crop as if you're pruning very severely. Intuitively, we understand that. It's no big secret. However, now we have numbers to go with it. Now we know uh, if we want to hit 60 kilograms, we need to prune to about 1.25 ratio. So now, see, we can apply some science to things that we already knew. But now we have numbers to go with it. And these simple tall spindle systems allow us to do that. We can apply science to the stuff that we know as horticulturists and get the desired outcomes. The alternate bearing index was another um, a thing we looked at. The, um, the higher the number, the more alternate bearing it was. And the thing that's interesting to observe here is that with very severe uh, pruning on up through moderate pruning, the alternate bearing index in these Fuji trees was, was very similar. But when we got into less severe levels of pruning, our alternate bearing index increased. And so this was a learning experience for me. When I don't prune as severely, uh, I might have more alternate bearing. Interesting. Average fruit weight, and this is cumulative over the, uh, the three years for which we have data now. Um, and we can see that uh, as we pruned more severely, we got an, an increase in fruit size. But notice that it kind of flattens, that curve kind of flattens out once you get much past one. And we didn't really see a dramatic in increase in fruit size beyond uh, the moderate levels of pruning we, um, which we're achieving about the maximum fruit weight on these trees as we pruned less severely and got into those heavier crop loads, which we saw earlier, then fruit size dropped off. But notice it's not a, a straight line relationship. It's curvilinear. When we look at how the fruit size distribution uh, came out in this trial, and this is cumulative, and for the sake of your poor eyeballs, which have been listening and looking at slides uh, all morning, I've just put three levels of pruning severity here. So the checkerboard is the most severe. The white bars are the moderate pruning, and the black bars here are the uh, least severe levels of pruning. This is fruit size across the x-axis, and this is the um, yield per tree of each size category 
uh, on that. And you notice quickly that with the very um, mild forms of pruning that we tended to have more fruit in the smaller fruit size categories that with moderate pruning, we had kind of a peak here on about 230, 240 gram fruit. That's uh, about three and a quarter inch fruit. And uh, you can also see that we had a shift with the pruning uh, towards uh, the larger uh, size categories of fruit in here. I'm sorry, this is up in here is where the three and a quarter inch fruit is, the three, 320s, not the 240s. Notice also, with the very severe forms of pruning, that we also reduce the amount of small fruit, but we also reduce the amount of large fruit too. So excessively severe pruning, in this case, uh, did not result in more large fruit per tree because it, in, it resulted in fewer fruits per tree across the board. And so even though there was perhaps more fruit in those severely pruned trees in these large size categories as compared to the to the mildly pruned trees, it's, it's still not very much fruit. So, as we knew, pruning has a profound effect on, on fruit size distribution, but moderation seems to be um, a good place to be. When we looked at trunk growth across the, uh, the course here, I was expecting big effects of, of how pruning would affect um, the, the overall size of the tree, and we really did not see uh, very much effect whatsoever. So to kind of kind of summarize this up and, and uh, conclude this part of the talk, uh, using this trunk limb to trunk ratio worked really well for setting the pruning severity in tall spindle uh, apple trees. Removing the next largest branch successively to a threshold, I think, is probably three quarters of the required pruning. So when we talk about quibbling, and in, in Wynn and I love to debate whether there are seven rules for pruning these type of trees or whether there's only four rules. And I think the one thing that we can perhaps agree on is removing the largest limbs in the tree is the first and most important rule, and it probably does three quarters of the good that you're going to accomplish with pruning. And so there's a take home message for you. This maximum limb diameter concept we used, which is simpler actually, less measurements, uh, actually worked better, was more predictive uh, when we looked at the data. And we think it, it kind of smoothed the data. Um, it's something that's easily taught to laborers. You can, you can hand them a set of rules. You can say, uh, in this orchard, I want you to remove all of the limbs that are bigger than the size of your lopper handles, or <laughs> give them a guide or a gauge. And, and they can follow that rule very easily and do 3 quarters of the pruning. If you were uh, in, a, in a year where you got really caught by bad weather or short labor or whatever, and you, and you had to go into an orchard and, and do the maximum amount of good with the least amount of pruning effort, removing the largest branch to a certain threshold is going to do three quarters of the good that you're going to achieve with pruning in there. And it might be the only rule you might apply in that particular year in a, in a situation like that. Without going into it, it also gives us a very simple rule that our engineers can follow. They are not horticulturists, and they're not biological scientists even, and uh, giving them a simple target, a horticultural target that's very simple, is, is going to be very beneficial as we move along in this project. So how would you go about doing this? Well, you, you could, uh, for starters, you could uh, scan uh, and measure the, limb, the limbs in the, the uh, about four trees in the trunks, set a desired ratio. In our case, that was around 1.25. To set that, you would calculate then the, the, what's the largest remaining branch, the maximum allowable branch diameter, and then just simply prune off everything larger. A couple of things we're still refining on this project, uh, one of which is, uh, if you think about it, trees, tree trunks grow every year, but once you reach full canopy, you probably don't need any more limbs than what is the maximum that will give you the maximum allowable uh, marketable crop per acre. And so we will, uh, we will need to adjust that based on tree age in the future. 
Um, and what we think will happen is likely target limb cross-sectional area will remain static. And in my orchard, I think that might be the case already. I think uh, as we move into the fourth year of data here, I think we're going to be finding that that ratio is about half inch. The maximum diameter might be about half inch in these, in these trees. Um, so I think uh, it's, a, it's a valuable tool that we should be taking a look at. Um, one of the things that when I was coming up through uh, getting my degree and, and, and studying under Dr. David Faree, we were pruning. And the reason we were pruning, and it got hammered into me every day, I think, was we were pruning to improve the light distribution in the canopy. Is that a familiar statement to most of you also? The pruning is a method of improving the light distribution in the canopy. And that is a universal truth and it will never change. However, with these tall spindle type of trees, if you're removing the largest branches in the tree, based on our data, the light environment is going to be pretty good in there uh, on all of these trees, assuming that you do a moderate job of pruning at least. And so I think as we move into this type of a system, crop load issues will start to dominate our thinking instead of light distribution issues. And I'm not here to diminish the importance of light, of light distribution in the canopy. It's still very important. I'm just simply saying to you, when you grow tall spindles on an appropriate size controlling rootstock and you prune it anything like properly, light's not going to be the killer issue that it used to be when we were growing vigorous cultivars on Mauling Merton 111, for instance. Light was critical then. Light's less critical now. Now I think we'll be pruning, whoops, and I got ahead of myself. I think we'll be pruning for crop load targeting issues. And so let's say we set a goal of uh, 1,500 bushel per acre and uh, we have a, an orchard at 3 by 4, uh, a 3 by 12 spacing for 1,200 trees per acre. That means uh, if we use the Aquili fruit and we know that we want about six fruits per limb cross-sectional area, that means we need a limb cross-sectional area per acre of about 25,000 uh, 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 centimeters. And on that number of trees, trust me, it means that we need about 21 centimeters of limb cross-sectional area per tree. So you would adjust the limb cross-sectional area on the tree down to about that number uh, per tree, which might be about 24 branches, if you prune according to the way I suggested. And then you put yourself in the right ballpark by just simply making the right number of cuts and the right kinds of cuts. Well, I'm growing galas, Jim. I want to prune a little harder and get bigger limbs. I'm growing Fuji's. They're, they're going to be big. I, I want to maximize my crop potential and, and uh, I'm going to prune. Those are called management goals. And this whole MD process can be adjusted by you, the manager, to meet your management goals. Um, it can also be adjusted to meet the capability of your site or the kind of cultivar you're growing. So I'm excited about this. I think that this, again, is a way that we can bring science into pruning. So here's my four rules. Wind has seven, I have four. Remove all of the larger limbs in the, in the tree and make a renewal cut when you do that. So you're removing limbs right at the trunk. And if they're bigger than about half inch, you make a renewal cut and remove those, anything that's bigger. You then you remove anything that's pendant, hanger, anything that's uh, growing too upright. So branch angle is the second rule. So you've removed all the big limbs, now you've removed all the, the hanging and, and very upright limbs. And then you're just going to thin out the horizontal limbs that are left until you have about eight or nine limbs per meter of, which is 40 inches, of leader height until you end up with about 27 or 30 limbs on the tree. And then you're going to prune each one of those limbs to a single horizontal axis. In other words, if the limb is complex, it's got a lot of side branches on it, you're going to thin that 
individual remaining horizontal limb down to a single axis um, as well. That's the most important rule. That's the second most important rule and so on. So the size of the limb we remove with pruning severity matters. We can do about 70% of the pruning, get about 90% of the benefit with one rule. Thank you. And